Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be covering topics under the standard 2.1 in sixth grade and then also topics under the study island lesson compare in order numbers. So if you haven't watched the fractions, decimals, and percents lesson yet, you might want to do that because those are skills you're going to need to know how to do in order to do these problems. Or if you've tried them that lesson in Study Island and you've done well in it, then you're set to go to try this lesson. But these are two lessons that you need to do in order. And so make sure that you're taking notes so that you can have examples and um, notes to look back on when you're trying these problems on your own and if I just go too fast then just pause and take your notes and get caught back up that way and you can even pause at the beginning of the question work the problem out yourself then we'll watch the video so you can see where it is that you're doing right and where it is that you might need some more work and you're more likely to remember your mistakes and do it differently in the future that way so I'm so glad that you're joining us today and let's go ahead and take some notes hello like I said you're gonna want to review the lesson on fractions, decimals, and percents. If you haven't done that lesson recently, it's going to talk to you more in depth on how to convert from a fraction, decimal, percentage. But I put the notes up here again of what we went over in that lesson in case you just need a quick refresher. Uh, you can pause this at any point and copy these notes down if you need to, or maybe work a couple example problems. But I am assuming that you've gone through the fractions, decimals, and percents lesson when I'm going through these problems. And here is also another review of all of the common fractions, decimals, and percentages that you will see the most often in problems. That if you work with them enough, you kind of get them memorized and might be able to skip a few steps. But if you're ever unsure, just follow the notes that we went over in the last slide. And something else you're going to have to know for this lesson is the fact that this is an equal symbol, which is at this stage in your life, you probably know that one. But you need to also keep track, keep track of which one is the greater than symbol and which one is the less than symbol. Sometimes to help me remember which one is the less than? I will draw the letter L, the capital L, because if you take a capital L and you smush over the top, it creates a less than symbol. This first question gives a list of numbers and they're all percentages and they want us to order them from least to greatest. So when I'm ordering percentages, and you might want to write this down, you just order them by like you order regular numbers only you just keep the percent sign with them so when i'm looking at this list here the smallest number is going to be 27 percent and that's not at the beginning so it can't be a when i look at the list in b once again there's that 27 percent is the smallest percentage and it's not listed first so it can't be b and then i look at my next list that 27% is my smallest number, and it's at the end, and so that's definitely not least the greatest, so it can't be C. So I'm hoping it's C at this point, but I'm going to check it. I'm not just going to assume. I have 27% is first. That's good. Then the next biggest number is 40%, and it's next, so that's good. And then 48% is a little bit bigger, and then finally 56% is the biggest. So this one definitely checks out to least the greatest, so my answer is going to be D. This question here, it gives me two decimals, which is exciting, so I don't have to do any converting because they're already both decimals. And I'm going to have to decide which one's bigger or smaller or if they're equal. So the decimals here, when you do decimals, and you might want to write this down, when you're comparing them, you are going to want to start with the place value that is most to the left and work your way right, just like you're reading. So you're going to work left to right and compare numbers to see which ones are bigger. So first I have 0 and 0, so they're the same. I can't compare. And then I have the 3 and the 9. So I'm going to look at those two numbers. The 9 is the bigger one. So that means that the 0.94 is going to be the bigger number. So that means 303 thousandths is less than 9 
the four hundredths. So I'm going to have the less than symbol, which is choice A, as my answer. Don't get tricked that just because this decimal is longer does not make it bigger. Do not fall for that trick. Um, you have to, especially with decimals, you have to compare them place value by place value like I showed you. So here I have two numbers and I have to decide if they're greater than, less than, or equal. And so once again, I'm going to start with the place values of the most left ones and work to the right till I get numbers that are different. So they both start with fours, so I can't compare those. And then they both have a decimal place followed by a six, so I can't compare those. And then they both have a des hundredths decimal place of eight, so they're still the same. And then I have this missing decimal place and a zero. Well, you can add zeros onto the end of a decimal for as many times as you want to. So there's really an invisible zero on the first number also. So they both have zeros there too. So these numbers are actually 100% identical, which is going to make them equal to each other. And that's going to make my final answer A. So once again, I couldn't assume that just because this number is smaller, that that meant anything. I had to compare it place value by place value. So here I have all fractions, which is exciting to me because that means I don't have to do any converting. And But there's three of them. I have to fill in two inequality symbols this time, which isn't a big deal. I'm just going to look at them in pairs. So first I'm going to look at one half and one fourth. I'm going to look at that first pair. And then I'm going to look at the second pair, one fourth and one twelfth. So when I look at numbers, if I don't know, if I can't visualize, you know, half of a pizza and a quarter of a pizza and know for 100% sure that how they compare, I'm going to have to write them with common denominators. So when I'm looking at 2 and 4 in this first pair, which I recommend that you rewrite it in pairs like I did, I'm going to look at the least common denominator is going to be 4. So get, to get this first number to be a 4, I'm going to have to multiply by 2. So when I multiply the top by 2, 1 times 2 is 2, so this first number is the equivalent to 2 fourths. And then the second one already had a 4 in the denominator, so I just have to rewrite it. So 2 fourths is going to be bigger than 1 fourth, because when I'm comparing fractions with common denominators, with those matching denominators, I just have to compare the top numbers, and 2 is bigger than 1. So that means my first inequality is going to be a greater than symbol. So right away I can get rid of A and C because they have less thans as their first inequality. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my second pair. I'm going to have to figure out what's the least common denominator between 4 and 12, and that's going to be 12. So I'm going to have to rewrite this first fraction with a denominator of 12. Well, to get from 4 to 12, I have to multiply by 3. So I'm going to have to multiply 1 times 3 also, and that's 3. So my new top is 3, and 3 twelfths is equivalent to 1 fourth. And then the second fraction already had a 12 in it, so I just have to rewrite it. And now that those fractions have those common denominators, then I just compare the tops. 3 is bigger than 1, so that means 3 twelfths is going to be bigger than 1 twelfth. So that means my second inequality is going to be a greater than also, and that's going to make choice D greater than and greater than my final answer. Now I'm getting into problems where I'm not comparing the same type of number. For example, here I have a fraction and a percent. So in order to be able to compare these, I'm going to have to convert them to the same type of number. So convert the percentage to a fraction, convert the fraction to a percentage, or convert them both to a decimal. You can pick which of those three ways that you want to do it, whatever is the most comfortable for you. I'm going to choose to convert the percentage to a fraction, because I don't mind reducing fractions. So a percentage is always out of 100. So that means I'm going to put 15 over 100, and then I just have to reduce that. Well, they end, both end in a 5 and a 0, so I know I can at least divide them both by 5. So if I divide 15 by 5, 
that's going to give me 3. And if I divide 100 by 5, that's going to give me 20. And so 3 over 20 is, I can't reduce that anymore. There's nothing in common with the 3 and 20. So that's going to be my fraction. So my other fraction was the 1 fifth. Now to compare fractions though, I need to have common denominators. So I'm going to have to see what is the least common denominator between five and 20. That's gonna be 20. So in order to get my first fraction to have a denominator of 20, I'm gonna have to multiply by four. So I'm gonna have to do that with the numerator also. One times four is four, and then five times four is that 20 I desire in the denominator. And now that these fractions have the common denominator, they are, I just have to compare the tops, four is greater than three. So that means four over 20 is gonna be greater than three over 20, and that's gonna make B my final answer. Now I'm comparing a percentage and a decimal. So I can't just compare them as they are. I either have to convert the decimal to a per to a percentage or the percentage to a decimal or both to a fraction. In this case, I think it's easiest to convert the percentage to a decimal. And remember, when you are doing that, you're just the decimal number always appears smaller. So I'm going to move the decimal two places to the left. And that's because that's the pattern that occurs when you divide by 100. And when I do that, I end up with 0.53. Well, my second number is also 5,300. So the 53% ends up being exactly the same as 5,300. And so that's going to make these two equal to each other, which is choice B. In this example, I'm having to compare a decimal with a fraction. So once again, I'm going to have to either write them both as decimals, both as fractions, or both percentages. So it's not really to make them, it would be a lot of work to convert them both to percentages. So I'm going to try to convert them both to fractions because I would prefer to reduce a fraction over doing long division. But you might prefer to do it the other way, which is fine. Do it your way. So one tenth is going to be the fraction one over ten. Remember, you always put the one over the denominator of the place value. So this was in the tenths place value, so it's over a denominator of 10. And then the second fraction is two over five. So I can't compare them just yet because they don't have the same denominators. So I look at 10 and five and I see that the least common denominator is gonna be 10. So that first fraction already has a denominator of 10. But to get the second fraction's denominator to 10, I'm going to multiply by 2. And I'm going to multiply the top by 2 also. So 2 times 2 on the top is 4. And 5 times 2 on the bottom is 10. And so 4 is going to be greater than 1 because I just have to compare the top, so that means one-tenth is less than four-tenths, and that's going to make my final answer C less than. Here I have three numbers, two are percentages and one's a decimal, so I'm going to try to convert the one to a percentage, this point one-tenths, so that I can just have the least amount of work. I only have to convert one number that way. So when I'm converting a decimal to a percentage, I'm going to multiply that by 100, or just move the decimal place two places. So when I have 0.1 and I move that decimal place two places, I'm going to end up having to fill a zero in. So 0.1 tenth is the same as 10%. So that means I'm going to have 90%, 10%, and 43% to compare. So the smallest number here is going to be that 10% because we're going in ascending order. So that means smallest to biggest. And then I'm going to have 43% and then I'm going to have 90%. However, that's not what you see over here in your answer choices because this 10% was originally the 0.1 or the 
one tenth. So in the answers, it's going to be back in that decimal form. And then you have the 43% and then the 90%. And that's going to be choice C, which is your final answer. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.